Today I'm gonna go into some mods I did on my car. For this video, I'm gonna go into the conversion from clutch fan to electrical fan. So basically it's a clutch fan delete. Reason being, first of all, the old clutch fan was going bad, or at least it felt like it wasn't working properly. It was making noise and deciding whether to buy a new one. Original one, of course, is a little bit expensive or buy a used one. I dove into the topic of clutch fan delete and electrical fan conversion on these cars, E36, especially with the M52 engine. Various routes you can go. There's one route. Let me open the hood. You know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, it's easier to explain. So here we are. As you can see, this one doesn't have the clutch fan anymore. It's converted to electrical suction fan, sucking the air from the outside going in. There's a couple of quirks to this conversion or questions that keep popping up or I've read or different routes you can go and how to do it. Let me start with the first option. If you have AC, which this car has, has AC, you can delete the clutch fan and just run it without and then use the normal temperature switch for the AC fan, which is up in here, this guy there, and put in a switch with a lower setting. This is a two-stage switch, um, high and high, high. So it's being said, if you switch to a lower one, which I did here to a, let's say, I think it's 80 degree and then 88 for stage two for high speed, then it's not necessary to have a fan here at all. I actually tried this briefly. I just removed the old clutch fan and I did buy the switch with a lower temperature setting anyhow. And I ran it, it was summer last year. And I noticed though, even while it was not overheating, when it was getting hot in the traffic at a light, the temperature was really creeping up 100 or even over 100 degrees. And before this thing kicks in, it's gonna take a long time. And to me, the way I'm running the car pretty hard sometimes, also in summertime, this was a no-go. I did already switch to a lower thermostat, uh, 80 degree, and I don't really want the temperature even in traffic, even in summertime to go over like 95 degrees. That is just me. While you can run this, there's different videos online where people just throw out the clutch fan if they have AC and use the temperature switch here, put in a one with a lower setting and run it. Okay, for me that wasn't enough. So the other option then I was looking into is search for a the universal electrical fan, push-pull, um, either way how you connect it. For this size radiator, I chose the 16-inch universal e-fan. You can find them on Evil Bay or just get the spa, expensive one, whatever. I just chose for a generic universal one. I put it in. And what else then, of course, is you have the fan. How are you going to control it? That's the next question from people asking how to do it. So let me explain. So basically what you need to run this fan is, of course, a power source. And you need a cable and a relay, which you connect to your power and ground. There's various sets online already pre-made. You can even use temperature switch here as a control. But then it would mess with the AC system, which I didn't want to mess up the AC system. Yeah, and no more fucking trains here noise as usual. Yeah. Now actually, <laughs> you can hear the fan. There was some heat soak, I was running it, and now the fan kicked in um, at a certain setting because the, the radiator got hot. When it gets hot again, when it's shut off, it turns on, it cools things down, which I like. So at the moment it's running. Okay. So you're opting for this fan kit. I mean, you can find, like I said, a universal one, then you need the cabling. You can make the cabling yourself, you need a relay, you need the power, ground, cables run. There again, online, you can find pre-made kits already, which I would suggest if you don't want to make it up from scrap or wiring harness. And the way I did it was, I bought a pre-made kit online, I don't remember from where, which included the connection to the fan. I actually have it run on the side here. It included a relay, which I mounted here, so I could hook up the power to from the battery terminal connection. I could run a wire immediately right to here, from here to here, and a ground as well. So this is tucked in here at the moment. And then the cabling itself is just up here on the side. It's this wire right here, 
or this cable strand, which looks almost factory, tucked in here, so you barely see it. Okay, that was quite easy. I mean, you just have to connect the fan, connect power and ground, and that's more or less it. Either you connect to a temperature switch like this, which I didn't do, like I said, I wanted to leave the AC system alone. Then I was thinking, okay, how am I gonna control the fan that it kicks on? And this is what I came up with. Yeah, I have to pause here. As usual, there's noise, there's trains, cars, people just bothering me, making noise. Birds also lurking around. Eh, I hope they won't attack me. Well, anyway, okay. So basically I wanted to leave AC system alone, also with a temperature switch for the AC system. I didn't want to splice into this. I wanted to have a separate control for the e-fan, which I have. So what did I do? Also, I looked for a way to control the fan that it kicks on at a certain temperature and then kicks off again. Different things again you can do. You can find like an adapter for the for the radiator hose with like you splice into it with the with the temperature probe. I, I didn't like I didn't like that idea to have another two connections with the radiator prone for leaks. I'm just glad I got this M52 more or less leak free, which is sometimes eh, can be difficult hunting and searching for leaks. So I didn't want to cut into this and do it that way. And then I found something online, an idea, which I thought, okay, I'm gonna try it out, is a capillary temperature probe, which I installed in the radiator uh, with zip ties. This has been holding for over a year now. It's two summers, more or less. So it's a capillary tube, which heats up, gives the signal. It's also run here on the side. And then I have the control mechanism for the capillary tube here with the dial. And here I logged the temperature, the way how hot the engine is running, and more or less adjusted it where it comes on around, I don't know, 93, 94 degrees. Because actually in the ECT, the temperature sensor, coolant temperature sensor for this engine, it's in the head, not at the radiator. So this is gonna be a lower setting uh, for it to kick on, but the head already has the high temperature. So it's a little bit you have to log and see where you want to have the setting. But I wired it into the relay also, it kicks in when the capillary probe reaches a certain temperature. The resistance here, I can dial it in, which temperature it is, and adjust it that way, the on point. So at the moment I have it set around 70, which is perfect, around 93, 94 during logging. Uh, coolant temperature, and you can see how I, see? It kicks on, the lower temperature, and then I go back again to 70 where I had it before, it kicks off. So the fan is being controlled by this and I ran the car last year, summer, all summer, high temperature and it worked perfect. It has been working perfect since. Now, the other thing which I added on as a safety precaution is a manual switch. I'll show you what I did. So basically the fan is being controlled with the controller here, very simple setup, just a capillary tube to the radiator and I have my dial here, but, but what if that doesn't work and I realize I need, I don't know, in a traffic jam, I need the fan to come on, whatever reason, it's not coming on due to whatever. I wanted to have a manual override, meaning I put a switch on off switch for the fan, a manual one inside the cabin. So at any time when I feel like I want to turn the fan on manually, I can do that. Let me show that. So basically what I did was I ran a wire from the passenger side compartment through here underneath and installed a manual on off switch for the fan. Like I said, this is just as a safety precaution, peace of mind more or less. So you can see here, I put it in, I actually cut a hole here. I used an old switch from an Opel Cadet. I thought it looked kind of cool with the fan symbol. And when you push it now, you can hear fan on, and then again, off. Yeah. So this more or less sums it up what I did. It's actually a very simple install, I would say. It's a totally separate from the AC fan and everything that is still in there. The AC still runs and when the AC kicks on, you still have the front AC fan running. That one is working and it has a separate control for the E fan. It kicks on when I want it to kick on. I can adjust the setting here for the temperature when I want it to kick on and it kicks off and on by itself when the car is shut down after heat soaking, which I like to cool things down on a hot summer day. And I have the manual override in the cabin as well, which like I said, it's not really necessary, but for me, I just wanted to have that safety to be able to turn this fan on whenever I want to, which works fine. This is very simple to do. It took me like, I don't know, 
half a day, not even. Like I said, for me, for the control, I went with this capillary tube temperature probe and thermostat and the manual switch inside. Of course, you do have to run some wires for that to the inside underneath here. You have to take this off and there's a hole, run some cables in there. That's like I said, the most enduring part, I would say, to run the cables to the inside switch. Other than that, removing the clutch fan, putting the E-fan is like a 10 minute or 15 minute job. Uh, running the wiring here with the relay, of course you can mount it wherever you want to or where you think it's nicer. So, and the cost for universal fan, the wiring, you're talking like a hundred bucks. Okay, if you want to go with a more expensive uh, fan, of course you can, more powerful one. Then also you will have uh, a different uh, relay or fuse there. Of course, this is fuse. Different ways you can go. This is, for me, driving around summertime is enough and has been working perfect. Yeah, this is just what I wanted to say about my electrical fan conversion, clutch fan delete how I did it, and I hope you got something out of that, or if you have any questions or any comments. You can hear now the E-fan turned on after the car shut off. Now it just turned off again. So it does run after the engine has shut off, just to cool it down a little bit more, which is, in my opinion, not bad, due to it cools heat soak, cools down the heat soak from the other components in the engine bay. So it can't hurt, right?